What's up, everyone? Kevin Allen here, a.k.a. The Geek from DFS Army. And this is your DraftKings NFL Week 8 first look lineup. And, you know, Week 7 is behind us. Um, obviously, we had some crazy events. We've got some injuries that we have to deal with, but it's super early in the week, and I can't wait to look forward to our next week. We had a lot of success in Week 7, really just loading up on Josh Jacobs and Kenny Walker. That was pretty much the play of the week. And, and of course, from there, you kind of had to um, you kind of had to just get your QB wide receiver stacks right. Burrow did really great. And of course, the the our optimizer loved Daniel Jones, and he absolutely smashed without really dragging many of his pass catchers with him, but he absolutely smashed. So let's see if we can keep it going for NFL week eight. And before I even get into the DraftKings pricing, I like to do a quick overview of the games, the totals, and the spreads so that we can just get an idea of which games we want to kind of uh, attack, which ones look like they're going to have some high totals. And just getting getting a look here on screen, we've got the Panthers at the Falcons, uh, 41 and a half point total, super, super low scoring game. Uh, Falcons are home favorites. There's some interest here in this game. Maybe the Falcons running game a little bit. We'll have to take a look at that. Maybe the Panthers running game. I, I know that um, Foreman is... Um, the last man standing with Chuba Hubbard seemed to get injured this week. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, Cardinals at the Vikings again, um, Cardinals, you know, Benjamin, and they're just not that good. I can't believe this game is as close as it, uh, it is lined at plus four and a half. Uh, the total here is 48 and a half and the Vikings are at home. Uh, you know, you, you like the Vikings offense in this game um, just in general, because Cardinals kind of suck, but you know, Deandre Hopkins is back. They did make some, Decent offensive production in week seven. So something to keep in mind. Um, next, we got the Raiders at the Saints. That's a 47 and a half point total. Pretty, pretty high. Um, one of the nice things about the Saints is they kind of you kind of know what they do. They have really good run defense, so it's much better to throw on them. Uh, we saw it when Burrow played them that, you know, a couple weeks ago that, you know, it was much better via the air than on the ground. And, and it put up a lot of points for the quarterback. So could this be the spot where Derek Carr finally has a big game? I don't know, but you know, if it's ever going to happen, this is it. I know all the, all the Twitter pundits. I uh, love Derek Carr. I haven't played him once all season, but maybe this, maybe this week, I feel really good about not playing him all season, but maybe this week, maybe this week we'll see. Um, but that one's got a 47 and a half point total. So something to keep in mind, uh, Patriots at the jets five and two jets. What? Are you serious? How is this possible? This game has a 41 point total. This one's pretty gross. Um, you know, Jets got the injury to Brees Hall this past week. And so I went to check Michael Carter and we'll, we'll take a look at his salary level. But the Patriots are generally not a team that I like to target offenses against. So we'll have to think about that. And, um, you know, the Patriots haven't played in week seven as of yet. So we'll see what happens with their running backs. But obviously, if Ramondre Stevenson somehow is a solo running back. We're loading up Titans at the Texans. Um, you know, this one has a 41 and a half, super low total, 41 and a half points. Um, Texans, uh, Damian Pierce, always of interest Titans, Derek Henry, always of interest. And that's about it. Uh, low total game. Not something we want to build around commanders at the Colts. Again, another low total here, 42 points. Nothing. I really want to get too excited about, um, in this one, Taylor Heineke looked all right in his debut, but we know who he is and what he does. And, and of course, the Colts are all over the place. I, I think this is a game where they should try to lean on Jonathan Taylor. We'll see if they will. Um, 49ers at the Rams, 41 points. And two good teams, very low total there. Two good defenses, but 49ers defense is the better defense. And quite honestly, I've seen enough out of the Rams to know that they cannot play against a good defensive team. I don't understand this line at all. I'm going to go hit that right after this and just smash that minus one and a half on the 49ers. But as far as the game itself, Christian McCaffrey, I guess, maybe can pay up for him. He didn't play much um, in his debut, but I'm sure next week they will load up on McCaffrey, especially coming off a loss. So we'll keep him in mind. But beyond that, I'm not going to get too excited about that game. Um, and the last game, I mean, look at this. This slate did not have anything that jumps out at you. There's no 50-point total game on the entire slate. That's pretty wild. But um, we've got the Giants at Seattle, and this game is pretty interesting. Daniel Jones had a big week. Uh, of course, um, Seattle's one of those teams you want to target offenses against. They allow for increased offensive production. Um, you know, flip side, I, I really like what's going on with Seattle in terms of Kenny Walker, and he's great. Giants pretty good against the run, but 
Um, I think one interesting phenomenon with Seattle is the injury to DK Metcalf. I don't know that he'll be back this week, which kind of leaves Lockett and someone else. So we're going to try to figure out who that someone else is and see if we can maybe find a bargain wide receiver on the slate because there is minimal salary relief as there usually is in the beginning of the week, but still minimal salary relief as of now, who knows as the week rolls on what will happen. So one of the things I like to do is what I call um, a bottom up build, right? So I like to build a value based lineup, find the best value plays, find the cheapies. And then we could, um, Add in the studs. We all know who the studs are every week, right? The way you win at DFS is by identifying the lower price players that could go off. So we'll take a look at a little bit of that. That's a lot of what we do over the course of the week with a lot of the research. So, you know, we'll see where we get to. But I'm going to start at on the defense. And the reason I'm doing that is I like to quickly identify what I consider to be the cheapest viable defense on a slate. And I like to pay down as much as possible, if possible. So let's take a look at the bottom of the range here. We, ooh, Miami at Detroit. Man, games at Detroit are so good. But Detroit's missing a lot of players on offense. Amon Ross St. Brown is injured. So I don't think I can play um, Detroit defense. They're just not a good defense either. Um, Pittsburgh at Philly. Philly's such a good offense. I'm not doing that. Bears at Dallas again. Dallas you want, not the Bears. Um, Cardinals at, at, at Vikings. Eh, that is not a good defense uh, to target. Here's one. I mean, commanders at the Colts. The Colts have been very generous to opposing defenses this season. And if I'm forced to pay down, I actually do think that might be one of the ways to go. Commanders at 2,600. Let's see if we could find something a little bit sexier if we pay up a little bit further. So, But commanders, I'm going to call the cheapest viable because the Colts have been very vulnerable to just giving up points to opposing defenses. They're 31st overall. That is a real number. So, and, and, and Tennessee smoked them this week and put up a big score. So, um, you know, their offensive line is just brutal in, in, in Indianapolis. But again, I, I don't, I don't love it. Texans. No Rams against San Francisco. No, um, saints are slightly interesting against the Raiders at 2,700. So they're another team I'll keep in mind. Not, not, not going to get me excited, but I'll keep that in mind. The saints are an okay defense. Giants at Seattle, um, maybe playable, probably not. Um, Carolina and Atlanta, I don't love it. Here it is. Um, here are the two defenses that I really like. So I think the true cheapest viable is probably the Patriots at the Jets. Jets missing Brees Hall right now. I'm sorry, but Zach Wilson still doesn't look good. The Jets are 5-2. and two, They're winning games. Zach Wilson looks a mess out there. I know it's crazy, but he does. So I think you could always play the Patriots against the young, confused quarterback like Zach Wilson. And the other team that I really like here are the 49ers. And again, the Rams simply cannot and have not done well against aggressive defenses. This is the one to plug in uh, until Matt Stafford shows he's not going to throw two interceptions and get sacked five times. I have to expect that will happen in this game. So I'm going to plug in the 49ers, a little more expensive of a defense than I normally like to play. So already we're getting into a weird week playing high end defense. Um, let's look at the running back position top down and just see what we could figure out here. And of course, all the way at the top is Christian McCaffrey. And, and I do think McCaffrey will get more run this week and be a very useful piece. Um, you know, it's not a great matchup against the Rams defense, which is pretty decent. And certainly I don't think I want to, it's really easy to just plug in the most expensive, but we're trying to make a realistic lineup. So I'm not going to plug in. I'm looking for the best value plays. For the most part. And I don't think McCaffrey is that. I do like Henry um, at Houston. This is a smash spot for Derrick Henry, man. You want to get him in your lineup if you can. Um, he's coming off. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a massive workload. Didn't get in the end zone this week. But I mean, my guy did it all. And he's getting targeted in the passing game. I love that. So Derrick Henry's definitely on my mind this week. Another one is Saquon Barkley. Love him at Seattle. Seattle very bad against the run. So these are really, really great studly payup options. And those are the two, right? These are the two I like the most, Henry and Barkley. I don't know we're going to get to them in this lineup, but for week eight, I love those guys. Um, Jonathan Taylor, sure. Uh, hasn't been doing it really. Very dangerous to pay up for Taylor, but I did like his passing game work last week. Um, I'll put that up on screen again, but eight targets, uh, seven receptions last week. So he's getting a little bit of workload there. The price is a little high. I would be very comfortable playing Jonathan Taylor. 
Dalvin Cook's more of a no for me. He's just not been all that good this year. Definitely not his usual consistency. Um, the scores are in the 15s. That's not going to do it for a $7,600 player. Um, Josh Jacobs uh, uh, crushed for us. I, literal, w- the rare all-in play. I had him and Walker in 80% of my lineups this past week. Really, really helped me um, kind of do all right. Even if I didn't, you know, I didn't take down any tournaments, but it put me in the money line in a lot of tournaments that I probably shouldn't have been based on, you know, having a lot of Herbert and just not the right quarterback wide receiver combinations. But this week he's up against New Orleans on the road, tougher matchup, priced up another thousand compared to last week. And while I have no problem going back to him because he's just been hot, right? And they're leaning on him. And I love that. I don't think this is a good matchup for Dalvin Cook. So I'm not going to forcefully target it. I think if I'm paying up again, I want to stick in this zone and then we'll figure out who we want to pay down for. But Kamara at 7,100 is really not bad at all. He's getting, you know, he's getting targeted to plenty. There's no one really to throw to in this Saints offense. I think he's better with Dalton than he might be with Jamison Winston. So I don't know who's going to, who's going to start Winston or Dalton, but you know, we'll keep Kamara in mind. Sanders at 6,600, just a little too expensive for me. He's just not that guy. He's not that guy. Jalen Hurts is that guy. Sanders, fine, but not somebody I'm paying for here. Kenny Walker at home against the Giants, I think is in play and definitely a viable piece that I'm going to keep in mind. Uh, Damian Pierce, uh, Montgomery, I don't play, I I really don't try to target players against Dallas, so I'm probably not going to use him. Um, Damian Pierce gets a ton of volume. He, you know, I like Pierce. I like Pierce quite a bit. Um, Tennessee, not the most intimidating defense. It's fine. It's fine. We keep him in mind. Um, and he might be my flex play. I've got a couple. I, I've got some cheaper running backs in mind, but he might be the flex. Zeke Elliott, big game last week. Two touchdowns, still only got you 15 fantasy points. That's what you're going to get out of Zeke. I like this Q tag, not because I'm happy that the player is got a questionable tag. I hate that. But I like it because believes he has a contusion on his right knee, forced him to sign a few plays. This guy always plays, so I assume he plays. But if he doesn't, ooh, Tony Pollard week, right? So let's keep in mind, if Zeke is out, we load up on Tony Pollard, right? Get crazy on Tony. Continuing down the list, there's not that many spots here that are are sexy. Do we get another week of Eno? Do we want to play Eno Benjamin? Maybe. Um, If he gets the full workload, Obviously, he's coming off of a smash game, but keep in mind he did it on not a ton of volume in a game that probably should have had a ton of volume, but he didn't get it. So, you know, Eno Benjamin, interesting. But the guy that I'm really excited about is Raheem Mostert. And I don't, yeah, we don't have this week's um, stat line yet. It is not posted, but Raheem Mostert catching passes, getting volume. He's just the focal point of the run game for the team. He's really taken over the spot. And I think he is massively underpriced for a matchup against Detroit. So for my first running back, um, I'm, I'm plugging in Mostert, and he will be probably a core play for me this week at that price. We've got to hang out in this price level zone because if we don't, we just can't afford anything. And, and especially early in the week, there's no glaring value spot that allows us to really spend up. So I got to hang in the mid zone. And Raheem Mostert is that guy. Um, moving on down the list here. I'm um, looking at some other names. Uh, not interested in Damian Harris. Khalil Herbert is a no. Najee Harris at the at the Eagles is a no. Madison is a no. Robinson is a no, no. Henderson, no. Right? So then we get down here. You know, I really want to like Tyler Al- Algier, but he only gets carries. This is yardage and touchdowns, and that's very, very uh, dangerous. I'm kind of thinking about Donta Foreman. I don't like teams that are underdogs on the road. And but the one thing about I'd say about Donta Foreman is he's very inexpensive and um they have no one else. I think Chuba Hubbard got hurt. So we'll keep him in mind. I'll continuing down just to see if there's anybody else. There really isn't. This is all pretty turdly. So this is a shit zone. We don't want to be hanging out over there. Um we get shit on us. We don't want to get shit on. So in the shit zone. So let's kind of come back up here and I'm going to plug in for now the home, playing at home, Damian Pierce. I love the volume that he gets. 
week in and week out. So I'm just going to plug him in there and we'll, we'll come back to it if we need to. But I think Mostert and Pierce give us 40, 45 touches, running back touches between the pair. And that's all you can ask for. It's all about volume on DraftKings for me. All right, looking at the tight end spot, this past week we had this really inter- exciting kind of scenario where we had all these pay down options at tight end. And to be quite honest, most of them, they got you what you were expecting, 10 points, 8.6. You don't really get a monster score. Every once in a while something pops off, but let's kind of check at the lowest end and kind of work our way up here from the tight end position. There are not that many tight ends this week. Um, the elite ones are not on the slate. So um, at the very bottom, I guess Noah Fant, maybe? Mm, you know, he's that guy that's not going to get you many points uh, at 2,800, so I don't love it. Forster Moreau, a bit of a disappointment this past week. Um, yeah, only 5.8. He was kind of a cash chalk guy. I think go right back to Foster Moreau. That's fine at 3,100. A couple other spots that I think are interesting, and one that I think is very interesting is actually Irv Smith Jr. Now, I don't love Irv Smith Jr., don't get me wrong, but yeah, he gets four or five targets a game. That's not that many, but... Cardinals defense is like the defense to target with tight ends. So just for that reason alone, I think Irv Smith Jr. is really in play. But the guy I'm most excited about here is Dalton Schultz. And Dalton Schultz kind of had an okay game. The one thing I, I'm worried about injuries. So if we hear that he's hurt as the week goes on at all, I'm getting off of it. But, you know, I kind of saw him bend his knee back, but then he came back to the game um, this past week. So I'm going to give him a chance. I'm going to plug him in. But if we need to go to Irv, as a matter of fact, you know what? Screw that. Why take the chance? Let's just go to Irv Smith right now. He's fine play. He's in an elite matchup against tight ends. And the game is one of the higher scoring games on the slate. So there's enough reasons to um, plug in Irv Smith that I'll just say, you know what? Screw it. Let's just plug him in here at tight end. It's a, I like to go low cost. And just to continue up the tight end ladder here. So you can see I like Schultz as well. Um, Gesicki, Okay. Firemuth, I really like the player and I like the situation, but not this matchup at Philadelphia. Pitts is always a no. Higby is pretty much always a no. And then we start to get into the expensive zone here with Hawkinson at 4,900 and Goddard. And, you know, now we're, what happened? We're, you know, and, and by the way, the other thing is there's no payup option. That's it. George Kittle is the most expensive. I don't like him one bit. And Zach Ertz is a fine play, but I don't want to pay 5K for Ertz. I've been paying 4,200 all season. So I think we stick with Irv Smith uh, down here and move on. All right, let's take a look at the quarterback position because this will somewhat drive our wide receiver decisions. So, of course, Jalen Hurts is always my favorite quarterback, or he's one of my favorite quarterbacks to play each and every week, but he's also massively priced above every other quarterback on the slate. So Jalen Hurts not only needs to... um, have a big score. He needs to well outscore every other quarterback on this entire slate. He could totally do it, but he can also disappoint us. Um, Anything probably below 30 would be an 18, 24, 32 would probably be a a, a disappointment for Hertz. He needs to pass that. And Pittsburgh might not have the uh, offensive firepower to force Hertz to have to do that much. So while I love Jalen Hertz and I love him, I'll plug him into my my season long. I don't really want to pay 2K above every other quarterback for him. Dak Prescott um, could easily lean on his running game in a game against Chicago. Chicago's kind of a dead offense. Uh, Here's my guy, Tua Tugovailoa. Now, I don't normally like to match a quarterback with his running back, but Mostert is in there for value reasons, and he does catch passes. But I, I loves me some Tua here at Detroit, and it's mostly because of the the matchup at Detroit. I, I we Detroit just gives up a lot of fantasy points, especially at home in that dome, and they fall behind. They tend to come back in games, so I really like this spot. Let me see if there's anyone else um, in the cheaper zone. I guess Daniel Jones is in play, but who the hell would you stack him with? Not not an easy one to kind of figure out. So I don't really want to put him in this style of sort of high floor lineup. So, no, I'm going to go right back to Tua. I will say that Kirk Cousins is play a bowl um, against Arizona. I don't have any problem with that. Again, I mentioned before, Derek Carr, if there was ever a time to play him, it might be this week. Um, Daniel Jones in play against Seattle. Anything else? No Goff, no Dalton. So, I mean, that's mostly it. That's mostly it for this week. Well, let's see if 
any new information comes out, maybe Heineke down here if you want to pay all the way down. But see, yeah, I can't play Pickett against Philly. So no, I, I think Tua is the safe, comfortable, and easy to stack player. Now, when we play Tua, so we've got Detroit. So let's kind of think about um, any sort of correlative plays that can go with this. And the first thought, of course, that comes to mind are Tua's pass catchers, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. We could try to squeeze them both in there. Um, I love Tyreek Hill every week, but 8,500 might be cost prohibitive. That takes us down to 5,500 average remaining. I, I don't really like that. So um, let's see what happens when we plug in Jalen Waddle. That's a little more reasonable, 6,100 average. So let's pair up Tua with Jalen Waddle here. And then let's see what else we can find um, at the wide receiver position. Of course, we got a Cooper Cup week, tough matchup, but who cares? Justin Jefferson, again, awesome. Love to play him, love to plug him right in, but 4,600, really, really tough to get there, especially in this kind of lineup. Um, again, Reek, no problem, but tough to get there. Um, but Tyreek Hill's also a great play, I think, this week. AJ Brown, sure, why not? Debo Samuel, more of a fan duel guy for me than DraftKings. He doesn't really get you. 100 point bonuses, uh, the, the three point bonuses for the 100 yards. And that, I don't do it good for me. He's not a volume guy. Um, Hopkins had the big week last week. I don't trust him to do it again. Um, look how many targets it took to get him to 23 fantasy points. That's a lot of targets. And it's just a reminder he's running these short patterns. Kyler Murray still can't throw, he's still not good. Uh, Michael Pittman's okay. Um, CD Lamb, CD Lamb is like crazy overpriced. I I'm not going there. St. Brown uh, concussed. I don't think Metcalf will play. And they raised up the price of Lockett here um, because Metcalf's going to be out. I get that, but I think Lockett's probably a, a, a very good play because I have no one else to throw to. Um, Devonta Smith, get a piece of that Philly offense. Yes, please. I'll take that. But you know, what I'm going to plug in Olave. Chris Olave, so consistent, such an important part of his offense. 13, 13, 14, 6, 7. Um, these games had injury situations, or at least one of them he was concussed, but had uh, already got a bunch of targets in it. So, uh, yeah, give me some Olave, assuming that the rest of that team is out. He's just been a consistent target beast. So let's plug him in for our second wide receiver spot, and um, we'll continue down our salary uh, <laughs> inspection journey here. Um, you know, I guess I would love to get some correlation on Detroit, but I'm just not sure who their wide receivers are. I don't really like Josh Reynolds going up against Xavier and Howard, right? So I usually like that when a team's playing Miami, I like to go after their WR2, but I'm not really sure who the Detroit WR2 is, so it's not really going to work. I don't think they have like a consistent guy. Um, Devonta Smith is interesting, but again, I'm not sure how much the Eagles will need to do in this game to where um, I'd rather have Devonte in a competitive environment. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is way overpriced here. Um, just, now we're making our way down the list. Again, bad matchup against Philly. Woods, when is Woods having a good game? Well, let me check some. Yeah, still. No, no. He He's so dusty. He's so dusty. Drake London, no. Moore, no. Re Reynolds, Gallup. Uh, uh, Pickens, I would like if, um, you know, I would like him if he... Uh, wasn't going up against the Eagles. Wandale Robinson caught six targets. La, la, la. Robinson stayed in the game. He wasn't thrown to after halftime. Injury appeared to be hit below the belt. Let me call. So we got to wait to find out. I actually like Wandale. I like the matchup. I like Seattle. I like all of that. But um, what I don't like is a guy with a Q tag, and it's early in the week. I don't know if he's going to play. So I think what we can do, let's see what Slayton did. Yeah, six targets. I think this is the guy if we need to pay down really tough let's let's continue down here paris campbell had a good week noah brown yeah it's it's um it's pretty skinny down here pretty skinny sub 5k even really sub 6k it's pretty gross alec pierce is another guy i don't mind at 4600 actually yeah again george pickens is a good good spot but a very tough matchup let's go with alec pierce we've got to play i feel like we have to play somebody under 5k so we can get a nice player here in the flex so i don't know we'll plug in alec pierce for now that's a spot where i feel like i'm very comfortable changing that if if we feel like we want to hopkins Pittman, kamara lamb actually this isn't really getting me to an area that i care to be in. i would like to get up to how can we get to barkley or henry 
All right, I know what to do. Sometimes, sometimes you got to play defense you don't like in order to fit the players that you want. And so um, here's, here's how I would do this. I think I'm going to go with Barkley Commanders, but just a little note that, you know, it's it. it if I want to play a better defense, and again, I don't like to change my lineup to target a particular defense, but if I want to play a better defense, I'm going to have to find a confident player in this area. And you know what? Let's take a look at DJ Moore. You know what? YOLO. DJ Moore. I don't know who the quarterback is going to be. It could be Sam Darnold. I don't know. Does it really matter? Let's plug him in. Um, so if we uh, if we plug in DJ Moore here, that leaves us 7K to work with. CD Lamb is fine. Um, Amon Ra, concussion. I would like to play Amon Ra if he was not concussed. I think it's a perfect... Um, Let's see. Was this a real concussion? Appeared to stumble towards the sideline. Nearest referee. Blue medical. Yeah. So this might have been one of those, you know, not a real concussion, but a guy wobbles a little bit and they automatically pull him from the game. So I'm going to assume that that was the case. And I'm plugging in Amin Ra St. Brown. We'll find out later in the week if we, you know, there's no problem. We've got a lot of salary left. I can, of course, play a cheaper defense here and get some even more salary going. But for now, I'm going to play the one that I like the most. And, I, and like I said, we can play Lamb. But I'm going to plug in Amon Ra because I get that Miami-Detroit little back-and-forth action, little correlation in that lineup. So there you have it. This is your DraftKings NFL Week 1 first look. Or Week seven, week 8. Where are we? I don't even know. Week 8 first look. Of course, if you want more, make sure you like, subscribe, uh, like the channel, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. Really, really important. I've got videos coming out all week. We got a FanDuel first look, our, our week in review, and of course, um, betting shows, tournament tactics, which everybody loves. All of that right here on the DFS Army YouTube channel. So make sure you are subscribed. You hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys later in the week with more DFS breakdowns. Take care.